Amen. We're going to be talking tonight about listening to God and getting a better understanding from God and, and, and listening for God's voice in our life. And listen, folks, there's one thing about, you know, us going, going through everyday life and us following our own plans. And there's another thing about us uh, uh, following God's plan. When God wants something done, he's going to speak into our lives, folks. But see, we got to set ourselves up spiritually and we got to set ourselves up, like I said earlier, with that personal relationship with God to show him that you know that I God I, I, I'm your man I trust what you tell me and when you do that see he can start speaking into your life and all of hell will try to do everything it can to take it out of you but see we have to come up to a point in our lives tonight folks where we decide in our spirits tonight that I'm going to listen to God and I'm going to make God my only option no matter how it looks look I'm not going to make my job my option I'm not going to make the government my option I'm not going to make my boyfriend or my girlfriend my option. I'm not going to make my husband or my wife my option. I'm going to make God my option. I'm going to go to God with every problem I got. I'm going to go to God with every issue I got. I'm going to go to God with every uh, hardship I got. And I'm going to trust God to speak to me and to show me how to get out of my situation. Listen, turn in your Bibles to the book of Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 3. I'm going to read the first part of this scripture right here. Listen, folks, this is going to be our breakthrough to hear from God. Hallelujah. See, they, 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 there's two different kinds of, uh, of the Word, the Word of God. There's the Logos Word, which is the written Word. And when we read the written Word, this is us reading the written Word. This is the Logos Word. But there's another kind of word called the Rima word. And that's where God speaks directly to your spirit. In other words, we can read here and we can get uh, information from uh, or revelation from the Logos word. But see, when we get the Rima word, when we're hooked up with God and we receive that Rima word from God, that's when he's speaking straight to our spirits. It says in verse 3, Incline your ear and come unto me and hear and your soul shall live. Listen to what that says. Incline your ear Come unto me and hear and your soul shall live. So I don't know about y'all, but I need my soul to live. I need my emotions. I need my will. I need my mind to be lined up with God tonight. And the only way I can do that is by inclining my ear to God. The only way I can do that is by coming unto God. Over in Jeremiah 33 and 3, it says, Call unto me, and he said, I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Listen, folks, the reason we're going through life and the reason we're feeling that so many things in life is because we refuse to call on the Lord. See, God is speaking to us every day, but while our lives are so busy, we can't hear what he's saying to us. See, and when once, once we get lined up with God, once we get lined up with his spirit, he, uh, uh, God will put it deep down on the inside of us, and it's going to be very difficult for anything to move it. The reason God, you can come in here on a Sunday morning, and you can get a word from God, and you go out of here, and you say, I'm ready now, I'm ready now, but the first little thing that comes along, it knocks you right off the word that God gave you that morning. But when you get this revelation knowledge from God, when you get a real word from God, when you for real hear from God and it's deep down in your spirit it's very difficult for anything to move it. See uh, we become like a mountain and it will be hard for our situation to be moved it will be hard for our issues to be moved, it will be hard for the hardships in our life that God is healing for, it, for us to be moved off of it because we done settled in our heart that God has spoken to me and I'm going to listen to him and he is my source have you made God your source tonight have you come to the conclusion in your life God is my source tonight have you come to the conclusion in your life that God is who he says he is and he can heal me if he says he can heal me he can deliver me if he says he can deliver me and see we got to make him our source tonight when you really make God your source tonight he's going to trust you enough where he can speak to you and see when you when you know for a fact that he's your source that's when you're going to carry out what he wants you to do see most of the time we're operating under our own wisdom we're under we're operating under our own knowledge and we're operating under hang on for a minute let me get my napkin out we're operating under our own understanding and listen, and our strength is small. Why is our strength small? It's because, see, we're trying to do it without God tonight, folks. Listen, we faint in the day of adversity. The first little hard thing that comes our way, we will faint right in the middle of it. Whereas, or whereas when we're locked in with God, we're trusting we're trusting God like we're supposed to trust God. See, when something comes our way, it don't matter what it is. See, we're like Mount Zion, and we're not going to be moved. You ever see somebody move a mountain? You don't see 
many mountains being moved. And see, that's how God wants us tonight. God wants our spirit so lined up with his spirit that when these things come against our life, that we won't be moved off what God's word says. See, when we try to operate on how we think, when we try to operate under our own wisdom, and we try to under, uh, operate under our five physical senses, See, our senses will give us false information because our senses are trying to make sure that our flesh is satisfied. But what God's trying to make sure is our spirits are satisfied. See, our flesh wants to control us and make and, and make sure our flesh is being gratified or glorified or satisfied where God says, I want to make your spirit glorified. I want to make your spirit satisfied. And listen, once you get your spirit satisfied, once you get your spirit content on God, you listen to me. You don't want to do the things that God says do. In other words, when you hear God tell you something or you read something out of this word, you're not going to be moved off that word because you understand that God is uh, uh, fulfilling my spirit. See, you get you get in tune with God and when God says something to you and you know it was from God, see, they can't nobody stop it, folks. Nobody can stop it. You can't stop it. Nobody can stop it. I got a scratch in my throat. Y'all excuse me for it. Somebody say amen to that. Y'all gonna wake up. <laughs> I don't promise y'all gonna wake up. But see, we gotta get to the point in our life, folks, where we believe the word of God over anything. Our senses are telling us, and we stand on God's word no matter what our natural self is telling us. See, we might have a child that's going crazy. We might have a, a, a bad marriage. We might have something going on in our lives, a financial situation. We might have something going on in our lives uh, 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 where our bills are out of control. Whatever the situation may be, what we got to do as Christians tonight, what we got to do as sons and daughters of God tonight, is we got to get in the Word and find out what God's Word says about it. God don't want us living in poverty. God don't want us living beneath. God don't want us living addicted to anything. God us living uh, out of sorts. He wants us whole tonight. He wants to heal us tonight. He wants to make us complete tonight. Why does he want to do that for us? So we can go out and help other people, folks. So we can be a, so we can be a vessel for God's love to flow through so we can show other people the love of God in our life and show other people what he's done for us. Just like me. I used to be a drug addict. He didn't save me just to save me. He saved me so I could reach out and help other people who was addicted to drugs tonight. Folks. Listen to me, folks. And whatever your situation was, whatever had you bound, whatever had you uh, shackled up, he delivered you from that so you could go out and help people that's in the same situation you was in and show them how good God is, show them how good his mercy is, show them how good his grace is, and prove to everybody in the world that God can heal you of anything that you're going through. Somebody say amen to that. See that revelation in you? Listen to me. It won't stop you. Even though you may be in a weird situation, you just keep going. Why do you just keep going? See, even though you're going along and you and, and you uh, here comes something that just smacks you about the face. You keep going is because you're strong and because you're firm in that word and you become like Mount Zion and now you're not going to be moved off what God's saying in his word. See, the devil's job tonight is to move us off what this word says about us. But God says, he says, if you will trust me and you will hook up with me, I'm going to make your spirit so strong that when these hardships come in our life, these troubles come in our life, these different situations come in our life, you ain't going to be moved. Why? Because now you're firm in my word. Now you're solid in my word, and now you're you're my son and you're my daughter, and now I can trust you with, with put stuff in your hands. I can trust you with people that's in trouble tonight. Why? Because now you prove yourself that you're not going to be moved off this word. In other words, you're building your faith in this word, and no matter how that situation looks in your life, you're going to stand on what God says in His word, even though it's the complete opposite of what's going on in your life. You're going to believe God more than you believe the situation. Amen? Amen. See, you learn how to trust God, and you know His way is best, and see, you have determined yourself that I'm not going to be moved off what the Word says. Even though it don't make no sense to my natural, see, that that's when I'm going to uh, uh, lean on God. That's when I'm going to rely on God. That's when I'm going to trust in God, and I'm going to receive what God wants to give me, so what I need to deal with the situation that I'm facing in life. All of us are facing different situations tonight, folks. God's got a word straight from heaven to deliver you out of that situation. 
But see, he can't give it to you if you're not if you're not determined to stay in his word. He can't give it to you if you're not building your personal relationship with him. He can't give it to you and give you what you need to get out of your situation until he knows that you're for real about you're going to stand on his word. But once he knows you're for real and you're going to stand on his word, he's going to give you exactly what you need. He's going to give you the combination to the lock that's got you locked up and you're going to be able to come right out of it with no problem at all. Amen? Amen. See, you learn to trust God tonight, folks. And now what happens? See, you got to understand that, see, Satan's going to come after you. Satan, is, he's like a lion running to and fro, seeking whom he may destroy. And he's going to come after you. But his greatest weapon is suggestion, folks. He can't make you do nothing. But he can suggest things to your mind. And if your mind ain't renewed in the Word of God, listen to me. See, these suggestions will come to life in you. Listen, listen to me, folks. See, he's going to try his best to suggest something to you that don't line up with the Word. He wants you to believe your situation over what the Word says. Hallelujah. Woo! He wants you to believe your situation over what the Word says. What is your situation tonight? And what does God's Word say about it tonight? That's the choice we have to make. What are you going to choose? You're going to choose your situation? Or are you going to choose what God's Word says? See, it's easier to choose the situation because, you know, it's just life. I, I'll just take it. You ain't got to take nothing tonight, folks. You ain't got to take nothing tonight. You've got authority and you've got dominion over everything Satan tries to do to you. You've got authority and you've got dominion over the, 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 uh, all the livestock in the earth, all the trees, all the everything. You have the dominion and authority over this. But why don't we take that dominion and authority? Because it's easier to give in to the flesh and do what the flesh wants to do and instead, of, instead of standing strong and saying, well, I'm going to deny my flesh and I'm going to tell my flesh no and I'm going to stand on the word. See, that's going to take some diligence. That's going to take some uh, determination. That's going to take you stand, uh, uh, being strong in, in what God's telling you to do tonight, folks. Listen to me. So if you're not firm about what God tells you to do, see, then you're going to end up quitting. If you don't have your mind settled on what God tells you to do, then you're going to end up caving in. If you don't have, if you're not determined in your heart what God tells you to do, then you're going to give, end up giving up. And you're going to walk away from God. You're going to walk away from the church. You're going to walk away from everything that God's done in your life. And your life is going to be worse off than it was before you come to the church to begin with. The Bible says that there was this certain man that he had a demon that lived inside of him. And, and, and he went to God and Jesus delivered him of that demon. And now the Holy Spirit come in and swept his house clean. He got rid of all the demons out of him. Got rid of all the addictions out of him. Got rid of all the hardships out of him. And then this man said, well, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good now so I can step back in. I, I can dip on down a little bit of that. And what happened is it, it was seven times worse. Seven more demons moved in his body. Now he was seven times worse than he was before he even came to God in the first place. And that's what's going to happen to us tonight, folks. Well, we're going to be seven times worse off than we was before we even come down here and got saved because we wouldn't stand firm in the Word of God. We wouldn't stand strong in the Word of God. We wouldn't be solid on what God's Word said. And we would rather satisfy our flesh than, than satisfy God tonight. That's just the bottom line right there. You You'd rather do what your flesh wants to do more than you more than what God wants you to do tonight. So see, folks, you have to make up your mind tonight that, what, that I have more faith in God than I do with what it looks like. See, I know I feel sick, but see, I'm standing on by His stripes, I'm healed. I know that my bills are out of control, but I'm standing on that my God says supply all my needs. I know I got a son or daughter that's running out of control, but I'm standing on the fact that train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he won't depart from it. So listen, folks, if you've got a choice tonight. Are you going to stand in your flesh tonight, or are you going to stand in the Word of God tonight? If you've been saved tonight, it would be foolish for you not to stand in the Word of God tonight. But see, until you start standing in His Word, until you become like Mount Zion, where you can't be moved, hallelujah, where you can't be moved off that Word, He can't trust you to give you what you need to get out of your situation. But when he get, when you get to the point in your life where he can trust you to give you what you need to get out of your situation, that's when you're going to get stronger and stronger in the Lord. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. amen. Y'all wake up. Amen. 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 Praise God. See, a lot of things in the kingdom requires diligent, uh, uh, consistent movement in order to move to the manifestation of the promise. See, but we allow our issues, we allow our circumstances, we allow our problems, listen to me tonight, folks, to move us off of what God said. 
Because it's easier for us to go with the flesh than it is the spirit. But once you start operating in the spirit, once you get closer to God, once you start spending time with God, it's easier, actually easier to follow the word of God than it is the flesh. See, your flesh is always going to come against what God says. Your flesh is never going to line up with what God says. But see, we got a choice tonight. We have the power of God. Over in Romans 8, 11, it says we have the resurrection power of God where he raised Jesus from the dead. That's the same power we have on the inside of us tonight. But how many of us realize that tonight? How many of us really believe that tonight? That we have the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead. We have that power inside of us. But how many people believe that tonight? How many people really got a hold of that tonight? How many people really, you know, really, really, really live by that tonight? Nobody does. See, that's what we got to get to tonight, folks. See, we're still living, we're carnal Christians. We still live the way we want to live, but yet we're trying to live for God. That ain't the way it should work, folks. We should make God our number one. And then if, if then, if, then if God wants to give us some pleasures on, over here, over here, that's fine. We can indulge in it. But as long as we're making God number one. See, he, if you make God number one, he's going to make sure you don't get too far to the right or you don't get too far to the left. He's going to make sure he keeps you in line with his word. And if you keep in line with his word, see, he's going to be able to bless you with all these different kind of blessings that you never even thought possible. I don't know about y'all, but... but in 1990, if there's no way I could even dream where I would be today. But it all come from me giving my life to Christ. It all come from me surrendering to God. And it all come from me putting God number one in my life. Amen. I can use Tommy as an example right here. Tommy was a mess three or four months ago. Maybe six months. I don't know how many months ago. Tommy was a mess. But look what God's done in Tommy's life. Because Tommy decided to follow God. Tommy said, I don't want to live like this no more. I ain't got to live like this no more. And I'm going to follow God. And now Tommy's got his life together. And now Tommy is on his way to victory. And now Tommy is setting himself in a position. And I don't mean to be using you, Tommy, but I don't mean to use you anyway. Tommy is setting himself in a position where he's going to be able to help somebody that was in the same place he was at. Amen. And see, that's why God delivers us tonight, folks. So we can help people who were in the same place we were. Listen to me. See, you will never receive what God promises until you remove all doubt and you stand firm in what God says. See, you have to put more faith in, in, in God's word than you do in the situation. You got to put more faith in God's word than you do the sickness. You got to put more faith in God's word than you do the pile of bills you got piled up. You got to put more faith in God's word than you do the bad marriage that you're dealing with. You got to put more faith in the word of God than you do your kids running wild and you don't know what's going to happen in their life. You put your faith in the word. You believe what God said in his word. And see, God's going to turn all that stuff around for your favor. But see, what we do, we sit around and we talk about the problem way more than we talk about the blessing. We talk about the problem way more than we talk about the solution. Matter of fact, if you get around some people, that's all they talk about is the problem. You never hear them tell about what God can do in their life, and they say, I'm born again, I'm a Christian. But see, the, what, are they, what are they doing? They're rehearsing the problem over and over and over in their life until this thing becomes real inside of them. Amen. And next thing you know, that problem is Amen. dominating their life. Next thing you know, that problem has completely engulfed them and they can't figure out, well, what happened? Amen. I go to church. The church ain't working. The church is working. You ain't working. Amen. Bro. The church is working fine. This right here don't never quit working. It works fine. But it's you that ain't doing your part in order to hear from God tonight, folks. See, a lot of people think that they can ask God for wisdom and the next day they can have wisdom. Now, listen, folks, it's going to take spending time with God. It's going to take showing Him that you're serious about being obedient to Him. And it's going to take you walking in, uh, with Him con uh, consistently, not, not just when you need something. Most of us just go, go to God when we need something or our life is out of order or something tragic happens in our life. That's the only time we ever really go to God. That's it. Let me tell y'all something. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise God. I'm just getting this straight to the throne right now. Listen to me. Listen to me. A lot of us read our Bible every day. But see, we're not doing it for the right reason. We sit here and say, well, I read my chapter. Check. You're not doing it for the right reason. Amen. See, you need to slow down a little bit. You need to just slow down a little bit. And don't worry about, did I read my three chapters today? You might get you one scripture. And see, as you're reading it through your reading, 
And that one scripture stands out to you. You need to stop right there. Don't worry about your three chapters. And grab that scripture right there and start chewing on that one scripture. And start getting the nutrients out of that one scripture. Because that's what God is wanting to say to you that day. See, this whole message is listening to God. See, that's what he's wanting to tell you that day. That's what he's wanting to impart in your life that day. And he don't care about if you read 50 chapters a day and get your little check by your name. See, that's works right there, folks. That's religion. See, God is seeking relationship. I'm getting into a whole other message. But listen, God is seeking relationship tonight. He wants a personal relationship with us. He wants us to come and suck with Him. He wants us to come and be next to Him. See, He don't want us to come to Him just when we need something. He wants us to come to Him when we don't need a thing. Where we just want to spend some time with Him. Where we just want to enjoy His presence in our life. In other words, He wants us to excel into His presence. Where most of us never get come to that point in our Christian walk. And that's why, that's why you see people come into church and then they fall away from the church. And they say, well, you know, they blame it on the preacher. They blame it on the church. They blame it on everything else. And they, and they fail to look in the mirror and see what the real problem is. The real problem is they love their self more than they love God. Hallelujah. Praise God. I like that nobody else, though. Listen, see, see this, this serving God has to be a lifestyle. It can't be just coming to church one hour on Sunday morning, coming to church one hour on Wednesday night. It's got to be a lifestyle. In other words, you should be thinking about God all day long. When you wake up in the morning, God should be on your mind. When you all day long, you should be meditating on something about God. Well, you know how you know what's God? God help, help God. You know, all day long. That's the way it should be. But what we do, the only time we ever really talk to God, or we ever really want to draw close to God, is when we're getting ready to have an operation. Or, or something tragic happens in our life. Or something something bad is going on in our life. And then we want to, God, 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 help me. I need your wisdom. You ain't going to get it. Why? Because you ain't there. You ain't been spending no quality time with God. He can't trust you. You're not like that mountain. See, you can be moved. In other words, the first wind that comes through your life is going to blow you right off what God has been working on in your life. But see, when you spend time with God every day and you're personable with God and He knows who you are and you know who He is and you practice being in His presence, that's when He can trust you. And see, when you need wisdom, you say, God, I need you to show me how to do this. And He'll show you exactly how to do it. He'll show you exactly how to, how to get out of the situation you're in. See, when you say, God, give me wisdom, you've got to understand there's a course that you have to walk through before this wisdom is going to show up. See, you can't just say, God, give me wisdom and expect for him, uh, like a magic genie, to wave a wand over you and give you wisdom. Can he do it? Absolutely. Will he do it? No, he won't. See, there's a course you've got to walk through, folks. See, you can't live your life rebelling against God's word, then all of a sudden need something from him and expect it to be there. See, you have to pass the faith test, that, that, and this is going to require you taking time to know who God is tonight, folks. Do you really know who God is tonight? Do you practice a, 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 a basket in His presence? Do you have a time set apart every day where you spend with God? Or, or is your life just so busy? See, I'm going to say it like this. We got time to watch TV. We got time to do all this other stuff that we want to do. But when it comes to spending time with God, we just ain't got time. We say, well, I just ain't got time to do that. Well, see, that's where you're missing it, folks. That's why your life is so uncontented, and that's why your life is so empty tonight. See, we got to make time to be personal with God tonight. See, see, He's going to develop you to carry that wisdom, praise God, when? When, when you are consistently and di diligently walking with Him. That's when you're going to be developed tonight, folks. See, listen, listen. When you take the course and you pass the course, is when you're going to feel, is when He is going to fill you with the wisdom you need. To go through life and be happy in life. He is not just going to give you wisdom and you live your life cussing everybody out every day, living like hell every day, ain't got no respect for God, not none whatsoever. And then you say, God, I need wisdom. I need your help. Well, God's there for you. He's never going to leave you or forsake you. But you ain't going to get the help. You ain't going to be spirit-filled like you need to be filled in order to receive the, the, the wisdom you need from Him. Why? Because you ain't passed the test. See, you went through a course and you ain't passed the test. You've got to go through the course and you've got to pass the test tonight. It's going to take us diligently.
consistently seeking his face all the time. I mean, we're talking about God, folks. We're not talking about, I ain't going to say his name. We ain't got, we're talking about God, folks. You understand what I'm saying? But see, but, 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 but we take God and we look at God like until something bad happens in our life. And then we're down here crying. God help me. God help me. And then, see, if you would have been taking the time to pass the course all along, if you'd have been taking the time to spend the time and get personal with him, guess what? It's going to be like when something happens in your life, it's going to be like, Lord, you ain't, got, you ain't got to get down here and cry. You're just like, Lord, you know what's going on. And you know, I, I need your help. And the next thing you know, a light's going to go off in your head. And the next thing you know, he's going to show you exactly what you need to do to get out of that situation here. But see, if you don't ever spend no time with him, if you don't ever make him number one in your life, he is not going to grant you what you need just because you're in trouble right now. Matter of fact, he, he might want you to be in that trouble right now. So you might get a little bit more serious with God. You know where I am. See, a lot of people, a lot of times, people just don't have enough tenacity to go through the course to see their see see to see their prayers answered. See, they want God's blessing. They want what the Bible says they can have, but but they have not come to a point in their life where they're ready to surrender to God. See, they still want to live life the way they want to live life. They still want to get high. They still want to go to the club. They still want to go to the boot school. They still want to raise hell. They still want to cuss. They still want to do all this stuff. And they never even surrender to God, but yet they want all of God's blessings. And then they get mad when they see another Christian getting the blessings. Praise God. I like that too. Listen to me. See, we still want to do it our way and expect God to bless us. Folks, it don't work that way. And it's never going to work that way. See, folks, we've got to get to a place in our life where we know God good enough, where we can hear from God on a daily basis, and, 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 and we've got to know what the Lord's told us to do. And when we, come, when we get to the point in our life where we're obedient enough to obey Him and everything, this is, this, this is making Him Lord of your life. Have you made Jesus Lord of your life? That's a good, that right there, I could end on that right there. Have you made Jesus Lord of your life today? Are you still just playing this little Christian game? Or well, yeah, I go to church. Yeah, I do. I want to see some evidence in your life. I want to see God, what God's really doing in your life. And see, if you really operate in God, in the spirit of God, and you really hear from God like you're supposed to be hearing from God, it's going to be evident to everybody around you. Every family member, every child of yours, every, every co-worker, everybody you come in contact with, it's going to be evident that that right there is a man of God. That right there is a woman of God. Because I can see by the way they live. I can see by the way they talk. I can see by the way they walk. I can see who they hang out with, what they're really about. Amen. But see, we want all of God's blessings, but we don't want to do nothing to get it, folks. We just want him to be like a magic genie and wave his wand over us. See, 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 folks, once you hear from God and you really in tune with God and, and, and God is talking to you and you know it's God talking to you and you know that you know that you know and, 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 and that God is talking to you, you will almost become unstoppable. And the only reason I use the word almost is because of the human factor. We still human, folks. Listen to me. See, our flesh is always going to contradict what God says because our flesh does not want the, our flesh don't want us uh, God controlling us. See, our flesh all, uh, wants total control over us, and God has a perfect plan for your life. God has a plan to prosper you. But see, as long as you let your flesh control your life and you don't and you don't uh, uh, live by the Spirit, see, you're just a puppet on the string, and you're being played by the devil every which way. You, and you say, "Well, I'm a Christian," and it's good that you're a Christian. It's good, but what I'm talking about is going deeper than that. What I'm, what I'm talking about is taking the step off and walking on the water with God. And letting God know, God, I trust you. I don't care what's going on in my life. I don't care how much hell is breaking loose in my life. I know what I heard from you. And I know it don't make sense. And people's going to think I'm, they can think I'm crazy all they want to. And say, say and, and you know, and, and, and the more obedient you are to God, the more the attacks are going to come. Listen to me. I'm, I'm just being real with you. The more obedient you are to God, the more taxes will come your way. Every new level you go to, there's a new devil. 
And the, and the devil ain't going to quit. And what we do as Christians tonight, folks, is what we do is we read our little three chapters and we check our little list and we don't do nothing else for God the rest of the day. That's it. That's it. And I'm glad you got to that point where you check your little list. But I'm talking about going deeper than that, folks. I'm talking about living a spirit-filled life where, you're, where, where, where you've got control of who you are, where you're controlling your emotions, you're ruling over your emotions, and you're not allowing your emotions to rule over you. Don't you know that the devil, that's the first place he's going to attack is your emotions? It says right here, incline your ear and come unto me and hear and your soul shall live. I need my soul to live tonight, folks. I need more than just coming to church. I need more than just saying I read the Bible today. I need more than just saying I'm a Christian. No, I need to be spirit-filled tonight. I need to be filled with everything God's got for me tonight. Go over to first, uh, second Peter. Amen. It'll be up on the board if you don't want to go there. But listen, Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. It says, as according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue. So it says right here, when we spend this personal time with God, when we spend, when we, when we get real with God, it says he's going to give us everything that pertains to life and godliness. He's going to give us everything to make us happy. He's going to give us everything to make us content. He's going to give us everything to overcome anything that's holding us back in our life. When? When we tap into this divine nature. But see, you ain't tapping into this divine nature just coming to church. You ain't tapping into this divine nature by checking your little checklist that I've read three chapters. I can ask most people, well, they say, well, I read my Bible this morning. What did you read? I don't know. That's where the devil's got you right there, folks. You don't even know what you're reading. You, you make an effort to do it, but see, you're done, that's works right there. In other words, you're working your way to heaven by reading my three chapters a day. No, what I'm talking about is taking that step closer to God and getting more personal with God. In other words, get, just, get, just getting down where, you know, it's just you and God and y'all are talking to each other. That's where your power comes from, folks. Your power don't come from checking your list off. That ain't where it comes from. Your power comes from, it says that we receive his divine nature. Okay, he is divine. We receive his divine nature. Now when he speaks to us, he's speaking from divine to divine. Other words, it's no longer us just reading the Logos word. Now we're receiving Rima word from God. And when you receive Rima word from God, you can't be stopped. You almost come in a sense like a superhero. And people say, oh, that man's crazy talking about the super. No, I'm being for real. You become unstoppable. They can't nothing stop you. And so many people in your life is going to try to stop you. So many family members, people that's close to you, is going to try to stop you. Why? Because they don't understand you. They don't understand your walk with God. And they're too lazy or sorry to step over and get the relationship yourself. They want a relationship with God. They want to be close to God. They want to be a church. But they don't want to do what it takes to get close to God. What I'm talking about tonight, folks, is getting to know God. Do you know God? Do you know Jesus tonight? Do you really know him? You know, we hear the story about Jesus dying on the cross of Calvary and, and, and to save us, uh, give us salvation and to wash our sins away with his blood. Let me ask you a question. How many of you tonight is that a reality to you? Is that a really reality to you tonight? That Jesus died on the cross? Or is this just a story you've heard your whole life and you've just accepted it and you think that's what you've got to do to be a Christian? No. God wants you to go deeper. God wants you to really believe. God wants you to get the reality of what he went through on that cross. And when you start doing that, folks, it's when you're going to draw closer to God and he's going to draw closer to you. And listen, and the devil comes in, he's going to try to attack. And he, and like I said, the only thing he's got is the power of suggestion. And he's going to suggest this over here. He's going to suggest this. And it looks good to the flesh. The Bible says sin is fun for a season. Listen to what I said, for a season. And then it turns into destruction. And then it turns into hell. And then your life is out of control. And then you're at a place in your life where you feel like that, that, you can't, that, that you can't get out of it. 
In other words, the Bible says in Proverbs 14 and 12, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but to end thereof is dead. It seems right. It looks right. It feels right. It's, it's fun. But the end thereof is dead. But Jesus said, if you'll listen to me, if you'll hook up with my spirit, I'm going to show you how to obtain real abundant life. I'm going to show you how to have everything that pertains to life and godliness. I don't know about y'all, but I want more tonight. Me. I'm talking about me. I ain't even talking about y'all. I want more tonight. I want to know Jesus on a deeper level. Than that. I want to have a closer relationship with Jesus. And I know this ain't no shout and holler and run around here message. This is a message you need to hear tonight. Because, see, this little church game that most people play tonight, listen to me, ain't never going to get you nowhere. It ain't never going to get you delivered from that. It ain't never going to make your life any better. It ain't never going to get you where you need to be in when you're walking with Jesus. But when you get serious with Jesus, and you say, Jesus, I want to go deeper. And see, when you say it, what's going to prove if you're telling the truth or not, is what you do with your personal life. I see what y'all doing here. I want to know what you do behind closed doors. I want, I want to know what you do when you're in the booth in the dark in the corner in the back. Are you praising Jesus then? I want to, I want to know what you do when you're with the boys, uh, uh, when you're hanging out with the boys at work. Are you hanging out with the women at work? Are you, are you a follower of Jesus then? Or do you just go with any wind that comes your way? And see, folks, until we get to this personal level with God, until we excel into the presence of God, until we practice being in the presence of God, until we start receiving that ream of word from Him, other words, listening to God, hearing what He's saying, and see, when you get to the point in your life that, that where you can hear Him clearly, you'll be unstoppable. They will nothing be able to move you. You'll be firm. You'll be solid. And they won't nothing be able to move you off that word, what that word says. You said, with a preacher, you don't understand. My life's out of order tonight. This book can put your life back in order tonight. Amen. Amen. But it takes you seeking Jesus tonight. There's people in here right now that can get up here and testify right now what God's done in their life. Where they were 10 years ago and where they are today. And it's all because of what Jesus does. It's all because that they understood that, that, what, that, that the path they was on, it seemed right. But it ended in destruction. And God gave them another chance. And they took up, they, they took advantage of that next chance. They didn't continue to go down the path they was going down. They changed courses. And they said, God, I'm going to follow you. And today their life is a lot better. Amen. 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 Is your life not a lot better today? Amen. Amen. Yes, Amen. Why? Because it's what Jesus done. It ain't what you done. It's because you decided that I want to get more closer to the Lord and I want to be more personal with Jesus. And then once you do that, you're hooking up with His Spirit. And then when the, the storms of life come your way, you won't be able to be moved off what His Word says. I know it hurts and I know it stings and I know it's hard. But you'll be able to say, I know my God is good. And He can deliver me from anything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all come on, my uh, wife from Miss Colleen. Y'all understand that message tonight? Yes. Praise God. I know it wasn't no shout message, but praise God. We need to learn some stuff, too. We can't just get up here and holler all the time. We need to learn some stuff. Listen, folks, I need to go deeper with God tonight. I need to go, and I, I, I need more than information tonight. I need revelation tonight. I need more than just, you know, just, just what I can get from surface reading this book. I need to know what God's Spirit is saying to my spirit. And that's when you're really going get, to get the benefit of serving God. And that's when you're going to really start living a victorious life. But until you get to that point in your life, listen folks, you're just going to be just a carnal Christian. But when you understand that, look, God is God. And I want to be more close to God. And I want to get more personal with God. And I'm not just reading this Bible to check my list. I'm not praying just to check my list. I'm not uh, coming to church just to check my list. I'm doing these things because I want to know God more. And I want to know Him on a deeper level. See, we all need to be on a deeper level with God in life. Every one of us. If not, your life is going to remain the same. It's never going to change. But see, God can change you tonight. Amen? Amen. Amen.